had a few friends and I would try it out with them and all my girlfriends were like, give me, give me, give me, give me. Do you have more of this? Do you have more of this? And That's I was like, kind okay. of how I was. <laughs> I know. I was like, okay, I think I'm onto something here. This is good. of our time. I'm here with James Elliott, the founder and the creative genius behind Filigree Fragrances, based right here in Seattle. And so today we're just going to get to know you a little bit better. You don't mind, right? No, no, no. All right. Thank you for this. So let's just start at the beginning. What made you love perfume? What got you into, you into the world? So uh, that's a good question. I've always had a really strong sense of smell. Um, I have this huge love for fragrance. It, for me, it's tied to every memory I've ever held of, I can smell a note and just go back in time immediately to that precise moment of when I first experienced it. And it, there's something very wonderful about being able to create a story based on different fragrance notes. And so that's where this all kind of came together was um, music and notes and fragrance and coming together in a way where it's an extension of me. Yeah. Do you remember the first fragrance you ever fell in love with? So I, it sounds, uh, almost cliche, but like my mom's perfume. So she was really into Paloma Picasso. Okay. And it had such a very lovely, sweet, spicy note to it. And for the longest time, I just thought, oh, this is her fragrance. I'll just buy it for every year. Mm -hmm. And so I just buy bottle after bottle of Paloma Picasso. And she started growing this huge collection of it, never being able to go through every single bottle I ever bought for her. But <laughs> for her, for me, it was just, it was that note of any time I can ever smell that, it's burned into my memory ingrained there and it just always reminds me of her. So at what point did you yourself want to enter the perfume world as a creator? Uh, at one point I no longer had the ability to get this fragrance that I loved and so I said to myself well I'll just make my own fragrance how hard can it be? <laughs> and uh, realizing that that <laughs> is a very loaded question it's a very hard question and it kind of this is what happened as a result. So. It was uh, teaching myself about perfume and learning what goes into perfume and the different fragrance notes and what it means to have top middle base and concentration and mixing things together and understanding synthetic versus natural, um, what it ha the quality of the materials and what goes into that. And it was five years of trial and error. Wow. So you're self-taught. I'm completely self-taught. Um, how did you get the technical aspects of it to, to make a fragrance? So a lot of it was, um, using YouTube and Google and the internet and just researching books and going to the library and reading about um, aromatherapy and chemistry and understanding how compounds mix together. Uh, and then again, a lot of it was that trial and error of just of reading about something like oak moss. I had mm -hmm. heard about it and I was like, wow, this sounds beautiful. I want to buy it. But the first place I bought it from, it was a really low quality. And I really, I learned a very painful lesson of what, ha what happens when you don't use a really quality ingredient. Um, so then learning how to find the better ingredients and then investing in those materials and then working with those in the perfumes and uh, that has been a really great way to build relationships now so that I've got really fantastic ways where if there's something I want to try I can contact these people and say hey you have this ingredient I would love to try this can I get a sample. Okay wow. Wow. and then this happened. And this happened. Typically, a lot of people, you know, they use synthetics within their, their fragrance line. Why did you focus mainly on natural ingredients? So I'm, uh, I have a very sensitive skin. Okay. And uh, for me, it's a, I just didn't want to futz with any kind of synthetic because one, I was way out of my depth. And so I didn't want to make the mistake of maybe using one milliliter or one part too much and then having it go horribly wrong on my skin. So also, Natural materials are the easiest thing for a person to get. So if you don't have a background in um, chemistry and you mm -hmm. don't, and you, if you don't know what you're looking for, you can get something that's really beautiful, or you can get something that's really bad for you. But mm -hmm. so if I want rose, it's easy to, for me to locate rose oil. Um, but just working with the natural perfumes, I love the depth that they offer and the character that they bring. And I have friends who use synthetics. I have met a lot of great perfumers, and they make beautiful fragrances, and I love what they create. But uh, for me, it's just, it, it's, a, it's an extension of what I believe in my own personal philosophy of just trying to have as many natural products in my home as possible. Well, I remember uh, when we first met, 
you know, you came in just looking at fragrances and we started talking about fragrances. And you said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm working on this, this natural fragrance line. I'm like, in my mind, I've smelled a lot of different natural lines and, and there wasn't a lot of variation yeah. to the different fragrances. And when I smelled yours, one after another, and I, you remember my reaction, I'm sure. I was like, wow, oh my God, wow, you know? It was amazing. <laughs> so, it was something I've never experienced with a natural line before where it has so much variation. Thank and you. you were kind enough to give me some samples. They lasted on me for longer than a lot of lines. So you know, I had to, had to bring it in. And you went a step further beyond being natural. You got your fragrances vegan certified. Uh, why was it important for you? I had this huge love for animals and it's important for me to have that um, commitment to my my love for animals. So part of what I do for my business is that I've only been in business for about a year, but I take a portion of my sales, like right now 1%, and I donate that to Seattle Animal Shelter. And so for me, it's uh, the idea of keeping my fragrances vegan, because I have a lot of friends who are vegan and vegetarian, and I know for them it, that commitment to animal health and abstaining from cruelty is a big part of our lives and so the need for me to use an animal product in my fragrance this was just not something I was interested in I also wanted to let people know that I have never I have no intention of ever testing on animals mm -hmm. and to have that certification where I really want to stand I want to practice what I preach I want to stand behind what I'm selling to people so that they can feel um, I'm keeping myself honest well, I know you have a lot of vegan clients you know, and friends. Did you create this line with a kind clientele in mind? No, okay. thankfully I didn't because um, everybody has an opinion and it becomes quickly like designed by committee. So <laughs> it was more of, um, it, was a just, it was a happy accident to have a vegan part. For me it was the listening to the music that I grew up with and, and love and I was listening to it over and over again and the fragrance notes would start popping up in my head and it would get really annoying because I'd be driving and I'd be listening to a song and all of a sudden these things would start coming into my head and I could smell them and I was like, I have to pull over, I have to write this down, I'm going to get in a car accident. <laughs> and, um, and it was a great way to create those fragrances, but so because I just didn't want to add animal notes and I've tried a few of those ingredients where in their pure state, I just I can't get near them, like they, I, I find them repulsive. But again, in my friends' perfumes, they smell beautiful. But just for me personally, was that I could not open that bottle of civet without going, mm -mm, no, <laughs> this is not for me. Is there one where you're like, it's really close to your heart, it's your favorite of the line? I know it's like choosing stars in the sky. Or... That's a good question. Because yeah. um, the thing was that I made too many. It's like, <laughs> I... how, how, what is your process? So you started with deluxe, and then you hear more notes in your, you know, more notes in your head, so to speak, and then you just had to create more. And I just had to create more. Create more, and then, um, yeah. yeah. so like Incurable, um, right there. So yes. that was the one where I was listening to that song by Piano Magic, and again, I was driving and I could not get the notes out of my head. And I had to pull over and I had to write everything down because was I'm driving and here, I'm hearing and I'm smelling tonka bean and patchouli and amber and oak moss and clove. And I was like, I have to get this out of my head. and. It took me, and it, it finally got back to my workspace, and I'm putting everything together, and I was finally able to get it out of my head and get it into something visceral. But up until that point, it was driving me crazy, where I had heard artists talk about this, where they could hear music in their head before they wrote it. I thought, oh, that's really cool. I wonder what that would be like. Uh, and know. then <laughs> this is what happened. Um, so it was just kind of like this pure... It, all this happened because I just wanted to create my own fragrance, thinking like, oh yeah, this will just be something I can easily just whip up. like. A souffle. <laughs> well, you created a great line. There's a fragrance that's near and dear to my heart, uh, Lock Me, which you created um, exclusively to have here at House of Artan. What was the inspiration behind that? I know we talked a little bit about what we liked and everything, but... Okay, yeah. so I don't want you to, I, I know this is going to make you blush or laugh, but <laughs> because a large part of it was like the inspiration was with you. Oh. So, because when we were talking of when you were saying that I've always <laughs> wanted to have my own fragrance and I wanted this explosion of rose. Yeah. And so when you said that, that's what kind of set the inertia for me. And it was going out and trying as many different roses as possible because I've had a love-hate relationship with rose okay. because it can be a very beautiful scent, but also you can find ones that just smell like soap. Or for a lot of customers, are, they think of it as very matronly or very dowdy. And I haven't really taken as much of a dive and exploration to Rose up until that point. Mm. And so 
uh, I picked up 10 different roses. And I think even when we were doing the iterations of trying things out, it was that I came to you one time and I said, I've got 10 roses in this. <laughs> you did. Here. And I did. And it was like, okay, that's a lot of roses. Let's like bring it back down a little bit. Um, but yeah, so it was, um, I used that as a center, but then also you wanted something with a lot of your, your heritage and your culture in there. So it was taking ingredients I have never really worked with before and interweaving these pieces. Um, and then I think what happened at, again, one point I was listening to music and I was listening to Lock Me by Leo Delib, the French composer. And then all of a sudden it was like, click, 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 oh, Jasmine, click, 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 Lotus. And then putting those things in there and then just, it's almost like you can be a composer where you're sitting in front of your organ and you're just grabbing different materials and putting it together. And it was that, okay, I think this is where I'm finally onto something. And then I was able to bring it to you. And then when you first opened it, you said, ooh. Yes, so, okay. that's the reaction you want. And, yes. you know, it was a lot of fun definitely working with you. And that's when I truly realized that price was not an option. When you, <laughs> when you create fragrances, you're like, this rose is from this exotic land that's so hard to get. And I'm yeah. like, oh my God. And, you know, it's truly something you don't smell in a lot of fragrances out there because people don't want to spend that much money sometimes for the bottom line. So that's what I really, one of the many things I appreciate about your line is, is because you don't consider that, first and foremost, you consider the art, you know? Um, so, yeah, we're so glad to have you here. And um, where do you see filigree in like a year from now? Where, where would you think you'd like to be? Well, so this is, a, that's, this is still very much a labor of love for yeah. me. And yeah. I would like to be able to make this a um, a full-time profession. So right now I'm, I'm oscillating between my day job, which allows me to kind of have this as um, growing enterprise and growing business. And so it's, I'm well past hobby. Like I, I moved away from <laughs> hobby a while ago. Um, so now I'm in the place where I'm trying to grow this into a full-time job. Okay. And I would like to have that in a year from now, just be able to walk away from my day job. I can still have that if I need to, but I can make my company filigree my main focus. And then from there, grow the business and then be able just to like maybe take time off and travel the world and find new scents. More inspirations. More inspirations. Yes. Okay. So is there a way for people interested in finding out more from about your inspiration to hear the music that inspired these fragrances? So I, I, um, on my website, um, what I did originally was I wanted people to experience that short of smell of vision so I had if you have a Spotify account if you go to my website filigree.co you can listen to the music that inspired each fragrance mm -hmm. and then I also have it as a playlist so if you have Spotify you can follow uh, my I think you can follow maybe and then you could just listen to the music all together so we could probably even pipe it through your store and you could just have people just come in and just stand around and just listen to the music and, as they smell that the fragrance. That sounds like a fun idea. <laughs> we'll have a little filigree party. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, thank you very much, James. I appreciate you being here and allowing us to get to know you. Thank you. So to everyone watching in the Seattle area, please come on over to House of Artan. I would love for you to experience each of them one by one and find your favorite. If you're not in the area, we do offer fragrances that we, and in visual fragrances, that we do sell on, on each of our website, filigree.co and houseofartan.com. Okay. So if you haven't tried out my fragrance up before, you should definitely come down to House of Artan. And if you live in the Seattle area, he has an amazing store. He's the sweetest guy I've ever met in my life. And he has not only my collection, but other fragrance collections here as well. So you can hang out here for a while, come with your friends, and then you can try different fragrances and then maybe purchase a few that you can take home for yourself or other people. And for one lucky subscriber who also like and comment on the video, what will we be offering? So I will be offering one giveaway of my box set, which is one milliliter samples of all 21 fragrances. That's great. We will be putting the expiration date for the entry below. And thank you very much for watching. We hope to see you soon.